Maldonado here for Pop Culture Planet, and we are at the New York City premiere of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Let's go check it out. This is a story that's based on a true events. A lot of the characters are based off of true people. What kind of research goes into a project like this? Extensive. So I was lucky enough that I was given a non-fiction book by Jerry Bruckheimer, written by Damian Lewis, called the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, that itself was based on these secret Winston Churchill files that were only declassified a few years ago. And so I started with that, and then I'm sure you've seen how wonderful our characters are, how our actors bounce off the screen. I researched every single character in terms of making sure they were either historically accurate or amalgamating others to kind of give us an essence of giving you a sort of a fun ride and a fun movie. This film, I feel like the heart of it is that team. And I was wondering, what do you think makes like the perfect espionage team? Like, what is that secret sauce? I think any team needs to be diverse and well-rounded and everyone needs to balance each other out and in this film the characters certainly do I mean Gus March Phillips handpicks this this bunch of crazy people and they all bring something different to the table I think that's the key to any team is to is to all have different departments you excel in what's the secret sauce of a, a special espionage I think hard work diversity uh, good people you know good energy on set professionalism I feel like we were really lucky in this production, just having the most wonderful performers uh, in front and behind the cameras. I felt like everybody brought their A-game, and I think that's what, that's what the secret sauce is. The key in this instance was Winston Churchill, because he was the maverick, and he was also the one that decided that he was going to do this no matter what. And so the essence of every single character, and may I say, James Bond, that was inspired by these characters, all really flow from him. And their camaraderie, their humor, I think is really important, is, is key to that connection. And you, you mentioned James Bond. Is there any little Easter eggs to that in this movie, especially since you know the person who you know wrote that story is featured heavily in this? The, the Easter egg is Ian Fleming, mm -hmm. that he was such an integral role in um, organizing this mission and being the key intelligence operative that was masterminding it with M, can I say? That's, and that was another little Easter egg that the character Carrie Elvis plays is the forerunner to the character that Judy Dench eventually played in the Bond movies. Did you have to um, train or do any kind of like boot camp to get ready for this with everyone? Um, I've done boot camp before this, but this, this was the most important thing to me in this movie was to get his speech right because he is from Spain, but he lives in Fernando Po and island off the coast of Nigeria in the 1940s and he's mostly drunk for the whole movie <laughs> so I needed to get that down right so I keep, keep it going for the rest of the movie. How'd you perfect that? What's the trick? What's the trick? You get to set, you play it and then guy tells you double it, double it. So yeah, that, that was, it, was, it was pretty awesome just to hear him say that and it was rewarding to, 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 to just be allowed to play. As Gary Ellis has said in an interview that he actually has like a personal connection to this story through his grandfather. I don't know if he's told you about that or if you're familiar with that. It's true. I mean, he did have that connection and it was so wonderful that he was able to bring that to the role. Did you have a favorite moment on set? My favorite moment on set? I mean, there was a pretty epic moment when you see all those U-boats exploding and we did that practically in the Mediterranean. Uh, that was pretty awesome. But just arriving on my first day in this 800-year-old ruin, it was a camel market back in the day and we had our casino set in it. Uh, that was really special, just seeing all those actors, you know, interact with each other with this really, you know, peacocky kind of costume, and yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty special. It's really hard to pick. I'd say any moment where I'm confidently walking through Nazis with a Sten gun, as a teenage boy, that's a dream come true. So yeah, being in a Kai Ritchie movie with a gun, racking up numbers is, yeah, it's, it's, it's too many to choose from. I wanted to ask you um, if you had a favorite moment that you got to see go from the page to the screen. My favorite moment uh, was actually a moment that wasn't in the script, which was uh, Asa singing Mag the Knife in German, which actually came out as a result of, you know, the scenes that we put in place. And I think Guy found out that she could sing and was like, we're going to do a song. So is that bad? No, I love it. I love it. I mean, sometimes, you know, it, it's inspired by what you wrote and it, it yes. takes 
it to the next level. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But my favorite sequence of what I actually wrote yes. was the uh, the opening sequence in the um, in the camp where you see them going through the Nazi base and 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 killing a lot of Nazis, which kind of this movie is all about. This month actually is five years since the after movies debuted. What really? Has, yeah. What has it been like, kind of looking back now at everything you've accomplished since? Uh, I will. I say this all the time, and I phrase it the same way, but there's no better way to word it. I will always be eternally grateful to the After fans for giving me the opportunity to kind of platform and springboard my career to where it is. I really will. So, yeah, I mean, that's a real nice moment for you to tell me that it's been five years to the day. And yeah, as I say, everything I do, I mean, the After fans and the After franchise, I will never forget it. It's really, really so dear to my heart. So yeah, eternally grateful. I love that. Thank you so much for your my time. And congratulations Thank on this you so film. Much. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and if you want to talk more TV and movies with me outside of the comments section, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash kmaldo. If you like this one, you can check out more of my videos right over here. See ya!